So today's educational tip is going to be on root cause analysis. By far, I put a poll out to see what uh, people would be interested in hearing about as far as our next tip. And just by far, 60% of uh, participants said they wanted to hear more about root cause analysis. So today's short tip, and I tried to keep it as short as I could, but it does run about 10 minutes. I apologize for that. I try to keep them a little bit shorter. Uh, I just couldn't get all the content in in less, than, in less than 10 minutes, so I do apologize a little longer than my normal tips. So uh, today's tip is a really high-level overview of, of what is a root cause analysis and some basic tips on how to do one. Uh, and if you have any interest after you watch it of learning more about how to implement root cause analysis within your facilities, check us out at Prelicle.com. Hope you enjoy the video. Thanks. You ever feel sometimes like the equipment's in control of you instead of the other way around? Well, Root Cause Analysis, or RCA, is a fantastic tool in our toolbox to figure out why we're having these underlying causes of failure. It's particularly good for finding out the causes of repetitive or chronic failures. So let's take a look at some of the tools and techniques related to a good RCA. So the first step in doing a good RCA is collecting the data you need to analyze. Just like when we're at a crime scene, you wouldn't be able to solve the crime without any of the evidence. Well, the same is true when we're analyzing failures. We need to have the data to analyze. So I'm gonna give you an acronym called the five P's, which is the five different categories of information you're gonna to need to help you solve the problem. Those five things are parts, position, paper, people, and paradigms. Parts is probably what you think. It's failed parts from, from the failure scene, but it could also be a new part where you're comparing the failed part against a new part maybe from the storeroom or from the vendor. Now positional information, think of things like maybe a trend off of your process historian, it could be uh, something like position in time. Do failures happen more in the winter versus summer? So maybe it's got something to do with temperature. Are we having more issues, say, on one shift versus another shift? Um, so there's a lot of things when you think of positions. So just think of positions in time, positions along a, a, a trend line, things like that. Now people information, that's talking to people who were close to the failure, maybe they had worked on it, or maybe they did the repair afterwards. Um, it could be talking to somebody in the storeroom, or it might be talking to a vendor. So people is pretty general. Uh, just need to be careful when we talk to people. Uh, we don't want to accuse people. We don't want to um, infer any uh, blame. We just want to get the facts. We just want to understand what happened uh, so that we can ultimately get to the root cause of the problem. Now, paper information, that could be anything. It could be shift logs or uh, shift notes that maybe are left from, from uh, one shift to the next. Uh, could be paper schedules. It could be work orders that have been printed out and now they're in a paper form. Uh, don't get too caught up in whether it's um, you know positional information or paper information. Um, the, the, the idea behind these categories is just to help you think through the data you're gonna need to solve the problem. So, you know, paper information today is you know, it's a little different because, you know, a lot of the data that we have now is digital. Uh, so whether it's on a computer or whether you actually print it on a piece of paper, you know, think of it that way. Think of things that have been logged somewhere that you need to, to, to review. A paradigm is really the collection of mindsets that people have. So if everybody shares a common mindset, that creates a paradigm and that creates the way people think about problems. Uh, they might say, well, they, they talk about safety all the time, but they really don't care about safety. Or, you know, they, they never give us enough money to, to perform our maintenance, so the equipment just keeps failing. Or, you know, everybody knows that the operators are operating the equipment wrong. Or the operators might say, well, if maintenance could just fix this stuff right, we wouldn't have all these problems. So when you have a lot of mindsets, they generally roll up into what we would call a paradigm, and paradigms ultimately create culture and they drive behavior. So it's important for us to understand what the paradigms are and we generally are going to pick those up through our people information. As we're talking to people and, and understanding some of the problems, 
uh, we'll pick up on some of those mindsets. The next step when you're trying to solve a problem or do a root cause analysis is utilizing some sort of, of structure to help you and your team work through the problem. Uh, so in this short video, I'm gonna suggest something I'm very familiar with, which is called a logic tree. A logic tree will help you kind of think through step by step and get through the problem. And what I like about it is it, it removes all the, you know, the blame game and the who said what, and um, I think it's this versus I think it's that. It, it walks you through the process and then it, it forces you to try to use uh, data and analysis to prove or disprove your assumptions. So at the top of the logic tree, we have two levels. We have the failure event and the failure modes. This is what we call the top box. Now it's important that you remember that the, the, the failure event and the failure modes all have to be facts. If they're not facts, you're gonna start with assumptions and you will not get to the root cause when you start your logic tree with any assumptions. So the failure event, think of it as the consequence. That's the reason you're doing the analysis. You know, the, 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 the pump cause loss production of, of the, the unit. Uh, the failure modes are the factual modes of failure that you know. So for instance, that could be, um, you know, the bearing failed. Because we went out there, we inspected after the failure, and we could see that, you know, the bearing had failed, or we see that the, you know, the shaft fractured. Um, so any visible facts is what you want to start with. You do not want to put anything in those failure modes that you're not 100% sure are accurate. So once you fully develop your top box, the next step is to begin to hypothesize. And the way we do that is we ask a series of how can questions. So we say, how can the previous failure mode or hypothesis have occurred? And we continue that thinking, that how can questioning, as we get through the different levels of the logic tree. And you're gonna get through different levels of root causes. So for example, we have physical roots of failure, human roots of failure, and latent roots of failure. So when you think about this, if you think about what is a physical root, a physical root is something, you know, mechanical or electrical or, you know, something that physically caused that component to fail. Then you get down into human roots. Human roots, think of those as um, decision-making errors. Somebody either did something or didn't do something they should have. So somebody misaligned uh, the piece of equipment when they installed it. Uh, somebody put in the wrong bearing. Somebody, you know, they just didn't do the right action. They made the wrong decision. Now we could stop there, but that really doesn't get us to where we want to be. The next level, and this is where we change the questioning to why as opposed to how can, here we do want to know why. So, you know, why would that, that person have made that decision? So we might find out that, you know, that person wasn't properly trained. Um, we might find out that, you know, the part in the storeroom was, was miscategorized and it was the wrong part in the bin. Um, so we really want, need to get to understanding, you know, why did they make that decision that they did? So you ask a series of how can questions as you begin to hypothesize. You're going to ask that questioning, how can, how can, all the way through until you get to the human root. Once you get to the human root, you're going to ask why did they make that decision or why did they, did they have that human, that human root. So let's look at a more practical example. So let's start with, okay, we had a pump failure. Pump 101 failed. And let's say it's um, a chronic event. So sometimes it's the seal that fails. Sometimes we have bearing failures and other times, or maybe once or twice, we've had a coupling failure. So that collectively tells us our top box. Those are the facts that we know about the pump failures that we've been having. At this point, we ask a series of how can questions. So we say, in the case of the bearing, how can a bearing fail? And remember, we want to go from, from physical to human to latent roots. They always come in that order. So if we start out, we say, okay, a bearing can fail for basically one of, one of four reasons. It's going to overload. It could fatigue. You could have erosion or corrosion. So if you've got a mechanical component, you can pretty much pull these out of the box. Overload, fatigue, erosion, or corrosion. That's how a mechanical component is going to fail. At that point, we start with verifications. So we say, well, let's go verify if it is indeed a, a um, erosion issue or corrosion issue or fatigue, etc. 
And we generally do that with some sort of verification technique. In this case, we may send the part off to our metallurgist and they can, they can analyze it and come back and tell us, yep, that was a fatigue failure. So you come up with hypotheses, you then verify those hypotheses. Some of them are gonna be true, verified, and others are gonna be false. They're not true in this particular case. And we're gonna go ahead and X those out. So now that we've verified that fatigue is true, we ask another how can question. We say, how can you have fatigue? In this case, let's say we could have an, a balance issue or an alignment issue. So imbalance or misalignment. And again, we'd have to try to verify these as best we can. And that's why the data collection is so important. We need to go back to our data and see, do we have data to support that you know, one or both or either of these is true? finally, let's go ahead and finish our logic tree. So if we said that we had misalignment, we ask how can. That misalignment could have come during operation when it was running, or maybe we misaligned it when we installed it. Let's say that we did it when we installed it. So now we ask the question, why? Now, generally, people don't come to work and say, hey, I'm going to do a really rotten job today at my job. So if they didn't do a good installation, we need to, we need to drill in and ask, well, why would somebody do that? Uh, maybe they weren't trained, maybe they were new on the job, didn't have, have the skills, um, maybe we didn't have adequate uh, laser alignment tools, or maybe the tools were being used by another um, team and for whatever reason they weren't available. So we have to look at the underlying reasons, and that is what we call true root cause, getting down to the latent root causes. So once you fully analyze the failure, and you feel like you've gotten to the, the true root causes of the, of the event, now what do you do? Well, we would recommend that you develop recommendations based on the root causes. So don't just make up things, you look at the causes that you identified in the logic tree and you come up with corrective actions or recommendations specifically designed to eliminate or mitigate those, those root causes. Once that's done, you would want to put together some sort of communication, a, re a written report. Uh, There's a lot of great software to, to do this. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, at the end of the day, you need to have some sort of report that documents and summarizes the failure and what you, and what you learned during your analysis. Uh, then you want to communicate that to, to your leadership. So they need to understand, okay, this was the failure. This is what we found out. This is what we want to do about it and hopefully get their blessing and support to get those corrective actions implemented. And then finally, you've got to implement them. Nothing is gonna change, nothing's gonna improve unless you get into the field and actually apply those recommendations. Get those recommendations implemented so you can, can be sure that you're eliminating or mitigating the causes so that it doesn't happen again next time. Hey, thanks for watching this video on root cause analysis. If you would like to learn more about root cause analysis, check us out at prelical.com. That's P-R-E-L-I-C-A-L.com.